all eyes on Nairobi, Kenya. What has been happening for the past one week? Yeah. Young Kenyans are demonstrating for their rights. They're demonstrating with flags and banners. I can't even see anymore. They're, of they're being tear gassed. They're being tear gassed. Alma Obama, yes, a Kenyan activist and half sister of Barack Obama, is struggling to speak due to tear gas filling up her lungs and throat. The protest has escalated into severe clashes between demonstrators and police, resulting into intense violence. I've counted at least three bodies uh, around the parliament. Humanitarian organizations report that the police have been using live ammunition resulting to over a dozen fatalities and numerous injuries. The deployment of the military has further fueled the anger of the protesters. Police opening fire on demonstrators trying to storm parliament. I'm here to address you. You must go. Pluto must go. The intense anger arose when the government proposed significant tax hikes on a wide range of items, including cars, sanitary pads, smartphones, and essential goods like sugar, vegetable oil, bread. However, beyond financial concerns, the protests were fueled by political discontent and sense of desperation. People felt repeatedly oppressed and voiced the dissatisfaction, prompting the government to eventually heed their demands. I run a government, but I also lead people. And the people have spoken. It's not worth it that bread is a basic food for many Kenyans, and what makes it more significant is that bread has been exempt from taxes. However, the government sought to change this by proposing a 16% tax on each loaf of bread. This was part of the broader tax hike plan that included new taxes on items such as vegetable oil, sugar, milk, diapers, batteries, cigarettes, alcohol, bank transfers, furniture, letter tickets, smartphones, microphones and night vision cameras, making it feel almost everything was being targeted. Additionally, the government proposed an annual tax on vehicle ownership up to 100,000 Kenyan shillings per year, affecting nearly everyone in the country. All of them also risk increasing the cost of living uh, for lower and middle income people at a time when those groups are struggling and when they feel like they're not getting enough from government in return for the taxes that they pay. Only the proposed introduction of, of tax of basic um, Items like the sanitary pads, the bread, uh, like the motor vehicle tax. Now uh, people felt that you know this this was too much. If it had been solely be about taxes, then Kenya may have not reached this boiling point because the issue truly revolves around fairness and distribution of costs amidst Kenya's remarkable economic growth. Kenya boasts one of Africa's fastest growing economy. Since 2005, its GDP has doubled rapidly. At this pace, it could be doubling again less than a decade, suggesting that it may achieve another doubling in size under 10 years. According to the World Bank, not everyone gains equally in this rapidly changing economy. One out of every six Kenyans lives below the internationally poverty line. Millions, particularly Kenyans in the rural Kenya, survive in the equivalent of just a few dollars daily. The pandemic has caused inflation in Kenya, similarly to its impact globally. The numbers keep growing, keep swelling by the minute. And we are in solidarity with our brothers and sisters in Kenya. This is how it looks, just like a couple of years. Every month, the price of everything ups 6, 7, 8 percent compared to the year before. Did you know what the Western economy did when the price rose? They increased the interest rates, which has significant implications for Kenyan debts. Servicing costs have gone up. Uh, the government of Kenya is spending something like 35 percent of its annual budget on debt servicing costs before it even gets to then trying to provide services to citizens. In our world, some countries borrow more than they lend, and Kenya falls into the categories of net borrowers. It received billions of dollars from the International Monetary Fund, including a recent addition of 1.1 billion US dollar. However, these loans come with conditions. They can lead into higher interest payments or require Kenya to present a viable plan for generating revenue. Failure to these conditions could result into funding being cut off.
So against that background, they're sort of desperate to raise revenue and they're desperate to raise revenue quickly. Therefore, the government is just trying to prevent its economic machinery from collapsing, which it is relied on its citizens. However, these Kenyan people feel they're already being compelled and contribute a lot and they believe they're already giving a lot to the government. When you add more taxes and other economic shocks like disruption of supply chain due to wars and droughts, they devastate the country agriculture industry and then results the population loudly protests enough is enough. Kenyans, especially the employed, employed uh, Kenyans, uh, started feeling the pinch of their of the government tax policies. This is a reaction to a broader set of challenges that countries have faced over the past five years. Now, the protesters, especially the young protesters, feel the government is paying its bills with their future. They call the demonstration seven days of rage. We are rejecting this the president of Kenya has sent in the military after protesters set fire to the country's parliament building. We are not asking for any amendment. We are asking for them to reject it. They, they organized and mobilized on social media. Journalists have been dubbing them as the Kenyan Arab Spring because they were tech driven. How did you find out about the protests um, online? Every information is online. They commissioned transitions of the government, proposed taxes to ensure widespread understanding and deployed AI driven GPTs capable of answering any questions about the government's intentions. What we saw something that has never happened uh, in Kenya, the youth, the angry youth, overpowered uh, the guards who are uh, manning the parliament buildings and they got into... They publicly challenged officials and bringing coffins to certain offices, demanding nothing less than complete withdrawal of the government finance bill. However, the actions came at a cost. According to the organizations such as Amnesty International and Kenyan Medical Association, clashes with the police turned into civil and fatal, leading to deployment of the military from the government of William Ruto. Humanitarian groups alleged that security forces were arresting and essentially abducting prominent Kenyan critics, particularly those with significant social media following, and appeared that the president was unwilling to relent. That the government has mobilized all resources at the nation's disposal to ensure that a situation of this nature will not recur again at whatever cost. But it's quite striking that within less than 24 hours, President Ruto publicly accused protesters of treason and labeled them with threats to national security. I hereby put on notice the plans, financiers, orchestrators, and abettors of violence and anarchy that the security infrastructure established to protect our republic and its sovereignty will be deployed to secure the country and restore numbers. He would not allow uh, vandalism and acts of, of criminal uh, destruction that was seen. So it was a very uh, stern national address by President Ruto. Ruto went from that to this. Having reflected on the continuing conversation around the content of the Finance Bill 2024 and listening keenly to the people of Kenya, I concede and therefore I will not sign. The president had no option. The pressure was too much. Kenya's President Wiltro says that the bill of all proposed taxes will be withdrawn, leaving the question of how Kenya will pay its bills. It's a very strong movement. If the issues are not uh, uh, adequately addressed, we are likely to see a resumption of this, of this protest. In these accounts of events, the Kenyan youth are showing resilience despite 
the names they're being called, they're showing that they're united and also demand to be on the table because they need a just society where there's civic education and equality to all people. This is Varsity Updates. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Goodbye.